So I've been testing out the Pimax Crystal, which I got about two weeks ago. I'm gonna share my first impressions. So why should you care about a $1,600 headset? This headset is actually incredibly specced out um, from a mechanical slash hardware standpoint. The Pimax Crystal has a QLED display, which means that it has better contrast between like the light and dark without having as much light bleed from the lights to the dark areas. The resolution is 2880 by 2880 per eye. It has 160 Hertz refresh rate. So for the resolution side, it means the graphics can be really crisp. And the refresh rate of 160 Hertz means that like, you know, it's refreshing at a good pace. So you're less likely to get motion sickness, theoretically. FOV is 110 horizontal, 120 diagonal, which is a lot bigger than a lot of current headsets. So the headset that I've been using as my main headset for the past year or so is the Quest Pro. And that one has 106 horizontal and 95.57 diagonal. This headset does use inside out tracking. So similar to like the Quest Pro or the Quest 2, you do not need Lighthouse like base stations for this. So you can just use this as is. You can use a PC with it. And I think that's recommended. So this is a PC VR, usually it has cable that's connected to it, to your computer. You do need a pretty beefy graphics card for this. So I have 4080, which is really good. I got it for my birthday. However, it does have like, uh, all in one, which just means that you don't need to use it with a computer. Um, I haven't tested that feature enough yet to give too much information about that, but it's cool that you can use it either as PC VR or as standalone. And Pimax does have their own library of games in the Pimax store. Although in my version, I'm seeing the prices in yen rather than US dollars. The headset also has eye tracking, but I have not yet enabled that. So I will be making a more in-depth video a little bit later, but for now, this is like my first impressions of the headset. Okay, first impressions, let's start with the obvious. This thing is a monster of a headset. It is freaking huge, especially compared to my Quest Pro. I know they're a little bit fingerprinty looking, but um, it's a very big headset. So I was a little bit worried because it is also a little bit heavy. I was worried that when I put this on, it would feel really heavy, but actually it doesn't at all. It feels surprisingly light. And I think it's because uh, the headset's quite balanced. It has a dual strap too. So it has a stretchy strap. So you don't have to constantly fidget with trying to get this to the right setting. And also the foam in this, even though it does use like that standard foam that a lot of headsets use now, the one that absorbs a lot of sweat it can be kind of gross. Even though it uses that kind of same foam, this feels like a bit of a higher quality foam. It's super soft and literally when I, and also the back foam is pretty soft too. So when I put this on, I felt like, <laughs> I felt like my head felt so safe and cradled felt like I was my head was like I don't know surrounded by pillows or something so super comfy obviously comfortable VR headsets is crucial I will also say it does have a lot of like a lot of like tilting and like ways you can get this to fit on your head properly which I like so you can fidget this around to get it to like the proper level of comfort so comfortability on this is pretty good which you know is important so I'm going to compare this a little bit to the Vario Aero because I think that that's the closest headset that this could compare to, um, even though the Vario Aero came out like about uh, like a year and a half ago. So if you were to compare them, like the Vario Aero was like a $2,000 headset just for the headset, but the Pimax Crystal is $1,600, which includes the controllers. So for again, for the Vario Aero, you would need the headset for $2,000 and you'd need the base stations, which just tracks the headset. And then you would also need to get controllers. So it could cost you probably close to like $3,000, but this comes with everything for $1,600. Also with the Aero, it does not have um, like headphones or speakers built into it. This one does have these and these work pretty well. These sound really, uh, these sound pretty decent to me. I didn't have like any complaints or anything that stood out to me. Um, another thing on the Pimax Crystal is that there is like a battery pack here in the back. So um, it comes with this like charging dock. So this is what the battery looks like and this is the charging dock for it. And you would just put this like in here to charge and you would plug it in right here, uh, just a standard USB-C cable. And it makes that clicking sound when it's uh, when it's actually put in there. Um, one of the annoying things I would say is that the battery packs are kind of hard to take out and take back and put back in. Maybe I just haven't been working out. And for me, it's a little bit like to really pull hard to get it out of there, but that's a me issue. Okay, so to set up this headset, you it does come with this like little dongle thing um, and 
There's two USB cables that come out of the Pimax crystal and that comes that goes into this dongle that comes in the box and then you plug that dongle into the power and then um, plug the dongle with the USBs connected to it to your computer. Um, another thing to know is that it does have automatic IPD adjustment, which is pretty cool. Um, so you just like look at some lines when you first put it on and it automatically like mechanically adjusts. I'm pretty sure because I hear some uh, mechanical gears going on in there. OK, so I think that's the basics that we have. So now for my actual experience. First, the setup process was pretty straightforward. I thought that the headset itself was pretty like the graphics in it are really, really like pretty, very beautiful, comparable to the Vario Aero, like definitely one of the best graphics for consumer market. For me, though, when I was using it at like 120 hertz, I saw kind of like some swimming uh, in the graphics. Uh, what I mean is like, say you're standing here and then you kind of step to the side. The graphics should stay in one place, but it kind of moves a tiny bit and that's not supposed to happen. So it can that can induce a little bit of nausea. I did lower the refresh rate to 90 hertz and then that worked fine. I do want to talk about some of the issues I've had so far with the headset. So um, sometimes like when I try to turn it on, I have to unplug the USB cables and plug them back in and same with the power cables and plug them back in. Like sometimes I get an error. Um, I, the software I have is a beta software. It's like a new one that they rolled out. So hopefully that will be resolved like very soon and that, you know, I can just plug in the headset, turn it on and everything will work flawlessly. But if you can work through getting this set up and running, which doesn't take that long to do, the graphics are really good. The headset's super comfortable and it's a pretty good experience overall. I did say that I'll talk about the all in one mode of this a little bit. So again, that's a really cool feature that has like an all in one mode. So with the all in one, the software and the firmware, um, I think it still needs to be developed a little bit. Like I again, it had that little bit of swimming in the graphics. So I probably am just not going to test that out too much yet until that gets resolved. It's a new feature still. Um, so I'm not really like docking too many points there. Like I know that this is a work in progress headset. So let's focus on the PC VR aspect. When actually using the headset, it does feel really good. It looks really good. Um, one of the things for me is as someone that's been using standalone VR for a while now, uh, the fact that this has a cable is just something I have to pay attention to a lot again now when I haven't been paying attention to cables for some time. So I'll probably need to like install some sort of cable solution. Uh, the other thing for me is that like for me to want to use PC VR regularly, I would really love to have full body tracking, but for full body tracking either, we're waiting for Vive to come out with their um, um, self-tracking trackers, or you need base stations. Luckily, Pimax is coming out with a faceplate, which turns the Pimax crystal from being an inside out tracking to a base station tracking. So that's really cool. I think the fact that this headset is so modular is really exciting. Like there's so many different things that they can do with it. Like from a hardware standpoint, there's so many things in here that can work really, really well. Um, I do think that there needs to be a little bit more development on the software and firmware, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure Pimax is aware of this because again, the software that they sent me is still like a beta version. So um, obviously they're all, they're still working on it. Anyway, I'm going to keep using this headset for, I don't know, another month or so, and then come back with another like more in-depth review once I have more hands-on with this. Um, another thing I want to try with this too is I want to see if this pairs well with my VR treadmill. Um, so make sure you subscribe and like so that you can see that video when it comes out.